Let's finish by talking about an example of how dissonance theory can be used to bring about behaviour change in a positive way. One of the common targets for government funded advertising campaigns is to try and get people to behave in a more pro-social manner. For example, trying to get people to use sunscreen, drive more safely or use less water. Previously, we talked about ways in which persuasive messages can help influence attitudes and perhaps behaviour, but the effect is sometimes tenuous. Dissonance theory suggests that people's own behaviour could influence their attitudes, and because persuasion is coming from within rather than from an external communicator, it should at least in theory be more influential. The problem is that using the method we described in the Festinger and Carl Smith study, which is called induced compliance, we would have to get participants to act in counter-attitudinal ways to change their behaviour. As most people already have relatively positive attitudes towards being healthy, using less water and so on, this would mean getting them to behave in the opposite way, which would be completely counterproductive. Dickerson and her colleagues suggested in this paper from 1992 that feelings of hypocrisy could be used to motivate behaviour change that's consistent with pro-social attitudes. Their approach was based on Elliot Aronson's revision to dissonance theory called the self-concept approach. The basic idea is that people generally have a positive self-concept and feeling like you're a hypocrite is inconsistent with a positive self-concept. Hypocrisy is the feeling that your behaviours are different from your attitudes. You don't do what you say people should do. Aronson thought that when the positive self-concept is threatened, we'll be motivated to restore a positive self-concept in some way. So let's look at Dickerson and colleagues' 1992 study. They were interested in how to get people to behave in ways that saved water. The study was done in California, which at the time was experiencing a severe drought. The researchers went to the public swimming pool, and as people got out of the pool, a researcher approached some of them to ask about their past water conservation behaviour by getting the swimmer to complete a checklist. Now, this checklist was biased in such a way that it was difficult to answer yes to many of the questions, even though the behaviours listed on the checklist were all sensible water-saving behaviours. The questions from the checklist asked things like, did your shower take four minutes or less this morning? Did you turn off the tap while shampooing your hair? Did you turn off the tap while using the soap? Did you catch the shower water with a bucket and use it on your garden? Did you turn the tap off while brushing your teeth? Some of the other participants were not reminded of their past behaviour that related to using water. Half of the participants were asked to make a public commitment to their attitude about saving water by signing a petition advocating for people to take shorter showers and save water. They were told that this petition would be displayed around the neighbourhood so that everybody could see that this person thought that saving water was a great idea. The other half were not asked to sign the petition, so they did not make a public commitment to their attitude. The researcher then let the swimmers go back to take a shower. A second researcher was hiding in the shower block, however, and had a stopwatch to time how long the swimmers spent in the shower, and also wrote down whether the swimmers turned the taps off while shampooing their hair and so on. So, who do you think took the shorter showers? Let's take a look at the results. On the x-axis, we have the two conditions where participants had either been asked to make a public commitment to their attitude by signing the petition, or had not been asked to commit to their attitude. On the y-axis, we have how long the shower was on for in seconds. The blue shows the group of swimmers who had been reminded of their past wasteful behaviour via the bias checklist, while the green are those who had not been reminded of their past behaviour. So the greatest hypocrisy should be when swimmers make a public commitment to their attitude and are reminded of their past wasteful behaviours. These people should be the most motivated to change their behaviour to repair their self-concept. And we can see that it is precisely these people who took the shortest showers. So dissonance theory can also be used to change people's behaviour to be more pro-social. In fact, dissonance theory has turned out to be an incredibly useful theory. It's been used in research on decision making, colour preferences, the socialisation of children and cures for snake phobias. It's also been used to study interpersonal attraction, religious proselytising, gambling behaviour, 
water conservation and safer sex practices. It forms the basis of clinical interventions such as motivational interviewing. One of the things that makes dissonance such a powerful motivator of attitude change is that the persuasion comes from within us.